Okay, in this section, we're going to finish up talking about medical terminology and lifespan development, which is PR9 and PR11. So number one asks you to define each directional term below. Defining these one, go to the PowerPoint discussing these different ones, but I'll also go through it really quickly for you. Supine is going to be laying on your back. Prone is going to be laying on your front. Anterior is going to be the front of the body. Posterior is going to be behind. Midline is the middle of the body. Lateral is on the outside. Inferior is from an object going down. Superior is from an object going up. And distal is from the core of the body going away. Proximal is from that object going to. So we could say my elbow is proximal from my wrist, or my wrist is distal from my elbow. Mid-axillary is in the middle of your armpit. Notice how I've got a little bit of the lymphatic system sweating there. Uh, we're going to go all the way down that mid-axillary. That is the axillary talking about the armpit. So if you ever need to get an axillary temp, that's going to be in the armpit. An oral temp is going to be in the mouth. Understanding where words talk about in medical terminology will help you immensely in the medical career. What is a root word? The root word is the base. It's the foundation. It's what we understand. Uh, that When we understand the root word, then we add a suffix and we add a prefix to the word, and that helps create all these different types of words uh, in the medical dictionary that we use in EMS. And we refer to all this as medical terminology. It's the study of the terms that are medical. Uh, suffixes is the word that we add to the end of the root word and the prefix is before so the prefix will be the word that we add to and so let's discuss some words that might be some medical terms uh, cholecystitis itis is a suffix cyst is the root and chole is the prefix so cyst is a sac or a fluid filled sac chole is bile and itis is inflammation. So what is a bile fluid filled sac that's inflamed? Well, that would be the gallbladder. So the gallbladder is inflamed. So uh, when we have cholecystitis, it is gallbladder inflammation. Appendicitis. Well, appendix uh, would be your uh, root word. And then uh, itis is your inflammation. So inflammation of the appendix. A tonsillectomy uh, would be to cut out the tonsils. Atherosclerosis. Sclerosis is, is the uh, hardening or the uh, tightening of the, the arteries. So the athero is talking about the vascular network and sclerosis is a hardening. Acute myocardial infarction, AMI. You may see it AMI with an abbreviation. You may see acute myocardial infarction. Infarction means death. Myo means muscle, cardial uh, is AL means pertaining to, and cardi means heart. So we put myocardial together, we get heart muscle, pertaining to the heart muscle. And acute means right here, right now. Chronic means over time. So acute myocardial infarction is death of the heart tissue right now. And what is an abbreviation for sample? Number 10, list the abbreviation for sample. Sample is going to be S for signs and symptoms, A for allergies, M for medications, P for past medical history, L for last oral intake, that can be alcohol, that can be eating, that can be drinking, and E events leading up to. And sometimes you'll see some people add an R to the end of sample, and that R stands for risk factors. I always like me a good sampler platter. So sampler, uh, and we add the R, which is risk factors. O-P-Q-R-S-T, you'll see that every once in a while, but I go O-P-Q-R-S-T-I. O-P-Q-R-S-T-I stands for when we're trying to assess pain or trying to assess an issue with someone, so we use it as an abbreviation, uh, an acronym that we can start uh, remembering uh, better what questions to ask somebody. So O-P-Q-R-S-T-I. S-T-I. O stands for onset. P stands for provocation. What provokes it? What makes it better or worse? Q stands for quality. What qualifies it? Can you describe the pain for me? Can you describe the problem you're having? R stands for radiation. Does it go anywhere else than where it's at where you're pointing? S stands for severity. Severity on a scale of 0 to 10. 0 being no pain. 10 being the worst pain you ever felt in your life or the worst condition you've ever felt in your life. Can you, qual can you describe that for me? T, since I've gotten here, the time, 
Has it gotten better or worse? And I, have you done anything for it? The interventions. Now, realizing this, these are questions we're going to be using with uh, patient assessment, but these are abbreviations and acronyms that we need to understand that are also part of medical terminology. This one is one of my own. It's not going to be on the exam, but it's good to know. Activate. Activate is age slash gender. C is chief complaint. T is triage. I is interventions. What have you done for the patient? And then V is vitals. And then eight is estimate. Estimate your ETA. Estimate the time that it's going to take you to get there. Your estimated time of arrival. And then what are the planes of the body and define each one. So the planes of the body are the, you have three planes. You have sagittal, coronal, and transverse. Sagittal set, separates the right and left side. Your coronal plane separates the front from the back. And then the transverse plane separates top from bottom. So if I cut my body in half going left to right, then it's gonna be your transverse plane front to back is coronal, left and right is sagittal. Those are your different planes of the body. And the very last section that's going to prepare you for the module one exam is going to be lifespan development PR11. Uh, in this one I want you guys to do most of the research yourself, uh, but what is the definition of infancy? Infancy is usually de determined from the time of birth to one year. And then what are the normal vitals for an uh, infant? I want you to go ahead and look that up. And then what are the changes to the body systems? And then what are the physiologic changes uh, in this above group? What is the rooting reflex? The rooting reflex is when they have their cheek touched, uh, they start rooting around for food. Uh, this is where uh, the mother is deciding to breastfeed them uh, or feeding them with a bottle. And the rooting reflex is a natural reflex that they're looking for food. It's the same kind of mechanism we still have in our body today when you smell a good hamburger on the grill. When you smell that good hamburger, that's going to be your rooting reflex. You're rooting around for that good old hamburger, that juicy hamburger to get inside your belly. And then the palmer reflex. When you put something inside your palm, your hand grasps it. It's the same kind of concept that when you throw a football and you try to grab it, you grab it and catch it. That's a palmer reflex. But in the children, when you put your hand in... Uh, put a finger inside their hand, their hand is just going to naturally grab it. That's the palmer reflex. Also, oh, we need to understand what are the normal set of vitals for a toddler. Changes with the body systems of the toddler, physiologic changes. It's going to happen with each one of these age groups. But what is the definition of a toddler? What is the definition of a school age child? What is the definition of an adolescent? What is the definition of an early adult? Uh, and be looking up these, you know, it's a very common thing across all the spectrums looking at lifespan development. And then what are some of your changes in early adulthood? And then what are your changes in middle adulthood? And they call geriatrics late adulthood. Um, a lot of you at this point in your careers are in the early to middle adulthood when you're taking this course. And that's kind of concluding there. Uh, and you can see a little bit of the questions of public health there with PR12. Uh, we've discussed some of these uh, in prior chapters um, of these videos preparing for this module one exam. Um, but let's go ahead and just recover this. What is the role of public health? The role of public health is just to make sure that everyone in society is being taken care of and we're making changes for the positive. Uh, you know, this is where car seats come into play. This is where seat belts come into play. Uh, this is where bicycle safety, uh, you know, encouraging people to be safe uh, so that we're preventing uh, injuries from occurring. It's, it's the health of the public. Uh, and so describing some different ways that we can do injury prevention, that's bicycle safety courses. Uh, that is, you know, doing child seat uh, installations and uh, prevention. That's teaching CPR. Uh, in the school systems. Those are different types of public health interventions. Uh, in future chapters, we're going to be discussing uh, pharmacology and med administration. That's going to be on your next uh, module two exam, uh, where we'll also talk about documentation and communication, which is all part of your workbook one, because it's all part of preparatory, uh, but we kind of divide it up into things that get a little bit more difficult as we go through, because everything is building on what we're learning. So good luck on module one exam. Uh, study hard, prepare hard, work hard, and we're going to get through this together, and I know that you'll remember the material. Good luck.